Sri Lanka is an island country in South Asia. In this video, I share my personal experience as a traveler with no expertise of the people and place. Instead, I give you an overview of an organized tour with G-Adventures and National Geographic Journeys. Through a cultural exchange, these tours ensure an authentic and unforgettable life-changing experience for everyone. Ayubowan. Sri Lanka is officially a Buddhist country. The Sinhalese people have the sincere habit of acknowledging others, something that immediately was heartwarming about the people. The air of humility hovered around those I met, an easygoing temperament for whatever chosen activity. Their connection to the natural world is more evident than Westerners, and there's an inter intermingling with the natural world on a daily basis. A sacred relic, the Bodhi tree. This Bodhi tree was grown from a cutting of the southern branch from the historical sacred Bodhi tree, Sri Mahabodhi which was destroyed during the time of Emperor Ashoka the Great at Buddha Gaya in India. Not just from Sri Lanka, from all over the world, Buddhists come here to respect the Bodhi tree. Our CEO of our tour says, for you, this is just another tree, but for the Buddhists, as you can see, they are pouring their heart out. But for the Buddhists, you can see they are just pouring their heart out. We met experts from naturalists, field guides, gemologists, craftsmen, artists, performers. We also saw people in the process of being married and children getting educated. Landscapes. Although we were in the land of the leopard, we had no fear. We were in good hands. A birder's dream or a naturalist's playground, beauty was to be found everywhere. I must mention that the humidity made my camera lenses fog up often. Depicted wildlife at the zoo or in a magazine does not paint a total picture. When you are in the actual presence of wildlife, in its home environment and in all its elements, you see the true spirit, a sense of freedom, the awesome, the mysterious, and a terrific present day hint of its ancestral prehistoric form. The Sri Lankan elephant is an Asian species that is smaller than the African elephant. A male was called a tusker, usually traveling alone. Most herds are comprised of females and juveniles. Here, sisters find a small pond and cool themselves off on a very hot day. Our ability to see wildlife in this way were through organized safari trips where we stayed on specific paths it didn't disrupt the wildlife in their environment. We were able to actually see quite a large population of wildlife that neither feared us or uh, were concerned by our presence. And that was a wonderful feeling. Staying the night in a tent 
and listening to the birds was also an inspirational experience. The Singalese Food When I travel, I worry about my dietary sensitivity. But funny I had no problem with the vegetable kotu, loaded with jackfruit, arak, a coconut liqueur, tropical fruits and hearty vegetables abound for everyone. New hot foods in clay pots, rice, and banana blossoms on a lily pad was all new for me. Overall, the food was very delicious and good to see, as a fellow gardener, where their food came from. Sri Lankan soil is very rich, with a great production of cashew and spices that are coveted from around the world. I did go to the marketplace and take advantage. Sri Lanka is the home of Ceylon tea. At the Bluefield Tea Plantation, I failed a contest to pick the most and best quality tea leaves in a timed race. There were two cooking demonstrations that were so valuable to me. One of them, a curry doll lesson at our campground. The other lesson was how to make string hoppers, which was more than a lesson in cooking. We learned about how families live and the terrible economic strife that happens in Sri Lanka, where family members are sent abroad to bring home money because it is just not sustainable to have your work in the country. Flowers. The presence of flowers is more than natural beauty. It is an offering, a reminder, an action, to be open, to be humble, to be aware. 